Good greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to another epi of League Unlock. My name is Eric. Thank you for joining us with your beautiful selves again today as we are honoring G2 Esports and their 12th title. Figured greatest time as any to go back in time and look at every G2 roster, all eight of them since they came into the big leagues in 2016, and we are ranking them from worst to first. And by the way, even the worst roster iteration of G2 or worst performance they've had in a year, better than the majority of teams that we've seen in the E-M-E-A-L-E-C, European LCS era. So truly one of the greatest organizations performance-wise that we have had in any region. And shockingly, at the very bottom of this list is the one that probably had the most hype in terms of a roster. This is the super team that wasn't, I cannot believe we were talking about 2021 G2 at the lowest of this list. This is simply... They replaced Perks for Reckless, who should have been a straight-up upgrade in the bot lane. And this is after they had just won four titles in a row. Another semifinal at Worlds. We're expecting big things from them. And they end up becoming the only iteration of G2 to not make a single LEC Finals. Not represent at the World Championship. Not going to MSI. Not winning anything. And this is despite, in spring... And in the regular season, pretty decent performances. Reckless even picked up MVP in spring. And I, you know, secretly wonder if maybe all the attention that Reckless got maybe had a damaging effect on the rest of the roster and their relationship with Reckless. Obviously, I don't have any insider info. I'm purely speculating. I thought this might be an issue going into it. And maybe him picking up MVP did do that because it sounds like him and Yankos, maybe Wonder as well, did not have the best relationship. But absolute insanity that this roster did not even go to Worlds and Poetic that was Fnatic that denied them that right in Game 5. They were still a single game away from qualifying for the World Championship, so it's not like they completely bottomed out and didn't even make playoffs in any of these splits, but the expectations for this squad were so much higher than merely making a World Championship that obviously... The disaster of things, and I call it a disaster. One game away from making worlds, but again, it was because the expectations were so incredibly high. Next on the list, you go back to the very first installment of G2, and that's where the expectations were couldn't be further than what they were in 2021 because they were a new organization on the block. Perks comes in as a rookie and immediately is picking up rookie of the split. Trick picks up back-to-back -back MVPs and you say, okay, your second worst ever split as an organization is when you win back-to-back -back titles. That's pretty insane, but they did have some oopsies on the international stage especially you talk about the birth of the vacation meme at msi where they go two and eight and completely disappoint and then you follow it up to the world championship in between spring and summer is when sven and mithy join the squad and worlds there's no redemption to be had because they're dropping games to albus Knox, luna who actually you know ended up taking up games off of everyone and we're one of the best wildcard stories that we've ever had we've done countless videos about that but still there was no redemption from msi so despite dominating and winning two straight splits in the lec the international trophy case or even just excitement was not there for this squad definitely disappointment as that top seed from eu but again talk about the greatness that is G2 as an organization when your second worst year or roster is when you win back-to-back -back titles. That's just how unbelievably dominant this organization has been ever since their very first split in the LEC way back in 2016. And, you know, guys like Kikis, Trick, Emperor, Hybrid, or maybe forgotten about names that you have on this G2 roster, mainly because they were only there for one split. We often just kind of break it up to the pre and post Zven and Mithy era, but there were other squad, other guys here on the squad that had a huge impact. Then we move on to a more recent memory, which again might feel a little harsh to put 2020 G2 this low on the list. And listen, truthfully, 
if you were to break this up uh, by halves of years, 2022 spring G2, you're probably putting top three, top four on this list because you had the incredible 12-0 run through the bracket stage to the lower bracket stage to complete the run all the way to getting another title after that disappointment that was 2021. They go to MSI, they get a win against T1 and you're getting very excited. And then the second half of MSI is where things really start to unfold and we see a different version of G2. You quickly realize that T1 and the rest of the LPL, the other teams at MSI were leaps and bounds ahead of G2. Yes, they picked on EG a lot in this tournament, but both EG and G2 kind of said their games, because they played so many matchups, this is one of these different MSI formats with kind of a group stage, rumble stage, yada, yada, yada. But they said that they knew, EG and G2, that is, that they were at a gap compared to the rest of the squad. So we're not even taking these matchups time and time again super seriously but after MSI they don't win summer and then they have the most disappointing world's performance that G2 maybe has ever had right up there with at least the 2016 one where they go one and five they even get smashed in a revenge matchup game from evil geniuses so first half of the year all gravy for this new look G2 squad with Flack and Targamus Broken Blade, this was a very much a retooling because after that disappointment of the Super Team in 2021, they go a different route with some younger players that aren't as established and immediately win a split, go to MSI, but that second half of the year, that's towards the bottom uh, in terms of G2 roster performances. So, you know, lots of positives from this year. I think Flacken and Targamus got too much flack after this year uh, for how things closed out for them and they both ended up taking a little while to get uh, their opportunity again in the LEC but very much uh, still talented players obviously Flack and we've seen with Team Heretics bounce back in a big way there were so many things to be excited for uh, with this squad Yankos really stepping into that leadership shot calling role uh, with this new opportunity with some of these younger players so again even talking about a lot of these rosters in the negative light doesn't make sense because the positives outweigh the negatives, save for that number eight, 2021 season. But pretty much every other year, you've been more on the satisfied, happy, excited side of things for G2 as an organization than you more than you are on the upset, disappointed uh, type of thing. So G2, even 2022, more positive than negative into the top five. There's only eight, so it's not that big a climb. But we are talking about, again, a very first half versus second half of the year, even tournament by tournament basis. 2018 G2. This was the full retoolings. Ven and Mithy are gone. Hjarnan and Wadid come over. Wonder and Yankos come over. It was the full rebuild around perks and okay in spring. They make a finals, business as usual, their fifth straight finals. Of course, they proceed to get 3-0 smacked by Fnatic. This is when Reckless is picking up back-to-back -back pentakills in this series. And that kind of snowballed into the summer split. They were not close to making it to finals. They get 3-0'd by Misfits. Have to go through the regional gauntlet. Have to go through play-ins to even get to the main stage at Worlds. And you might say, well, how is that? Ahead of the years where G2 was winning titles. Well, you may forget how that world's run played out as the ultimate underdogs as that third seed from the LEC. Not only did they get out of groups, they have one of the biggest upsets of all time against RNG. So this 2018 year is almost the reverse of a lot of, a lot of the other G2 rosters where they dominated domestically and then didn't perform internationally. Well, this year they did anything but dominate domestically and showed up in the biggest tournament of the year to have one of the, at the time, the greatest run that G2 ever had at Worlds. Going to semifinals, yes, they get slammed by IG, but everybody got slammed by IG, so making it to semifinals as this kind of misfits, underdog, Heimerdinger, trick team uh, was a shock to all when expectations were at their lowest. That's when this G2 roster absolutely showed up and again if you were looking at just spring and summer in the LEC obviously this is the first time G2 didn't make MSI 
didn't win a title, you're thinking, ah, the golden days are done. But then Perks truly got the shine in that matchup against RNG, where he fully did pop off and had redemption for the squad. Speaking of redemption, and this might be a contested one to put ahead of that 2018 run, we're talking 2017. And now you say, well, this is where more international disappointment, but ah, no, 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 no. This was not international disappointment. If you remember, in hindsight, 2016, you had the, my Azir is bad, uh, my rise is worse. It's me, G2 Perks. Why, well, I really butchered whatever that saying was. But you remember the little poem, little rhyming couplet meme. There was redemption, 100%. Internationally, this is expect joins the lineups. Ven and Mithy are fully instituted. MSI 2017. They get out of groups. They get the big win against World Elite, who I think people forget is kind of, it was a dominant 3-1 series win for G2, where World Elite were 100% the favorites in that matchup. And then they go against SKT in the finals and actually have a competitive four game series. Everyone was saying that redemption is there and a dominant, absolutely dominant summer split uh, where they capture their fourth consecutive title. And even though at this year's world championship, they did not get out of groups, they end up finishing three and three. You remember it is a classic. The group of death, even though they have Fenomach Che 1907, it's RNG and Samsung Galaxy. Obviously, RNG ends up losing a hard fought five game semifinals to SKT, and Samsung end up being the eventual world champions of the entire event. And there's that one matchup where I think Samsung's three and one, G2 is two and two, and they end up losing but it's a close 40 plus minute game even though they didn't get out of groups i think most people most european fans were proud of the effort and level that g2 put up uh, internationally 2017 as a whole was absolutely a redemption from what you got out of 2016 Sven and mithy were playing at all-time high levels perks was getting head-to-head -head matchup wins against faker at msi and as a whole, the team showed up at Worlds. And because they were so dominant in the LEC, showed up at MSI, I think I think we don't put enough respect on what a high level 2017 was. I know the band ended up breaking up the very next year, as we just highlighted the year before in 2018. But when you're looking at the full calendar year of work, even though Worlds in 2018 was a much better performance, if you're going from spring to summer all the way to Worlds, Definitely, the more impressive body of work comes the way of what we got out of 2017. Then we move into the end year of the dynasty, of the golden era, the golden years of G2 Esports. We are talking 2020. And this, this roster, these starting fives were so good. You even had Caps winning a title as AD Carry when he absolutely looked like he hated life playing AD carry in the bot lane. He's got these Aphelios games where he's dying 11 times. Then he has some pop-off Kog'Maw games. Then he's playing Ziggs. But the fact that they could basically style on the entire region of EU and win just by roll swapping yet again, absolutely insane. Obviously, there was no MSI to judge this year. This is the year, unfortunately, that it is canceled because of COVID. And then you get to the World Championship where it's another semi-final run. They needed a tiebreaker, almost clinched that first seed going head to head against Sooning where they played some absolutely insane matches. And then we have the disgusting Silas performances out of caps uh, against Gen G in those quarterfinal matchups where they proceed to 3 0 stomp Gen G before Dom Wan puts a halt to them completely uh, having another impressive run. But not as dominant as the year before, which of course we could get to, but still, this was very much the G2 dynasty. They could not be touched, even though Fnatic got very close in some of these uh, playoff matches. It, it was still very much G2's playground over in Europe. Uh, it's really too bad we didn't get to see another international shot uh, for the starting five at MSI that year, but still, back-to-back -back years where they delivered at the World Championship. And this is where you talked about guys like Yankos, Perks, and Caps. The resume after 2020, you're talking about them in all-time categories and statuses and not just Western players. But you could start talking about, at the very least, those three guys 
internationally holding up because they've made a world finals right with the semifinals afterwards you know they were showcasing that it wasn't just an eu western thing that they were playing at a high level they could very much compete with the very best of the world for the better part of three years uh so massive shout out for what they did in 2020 it's kind of the more forgotten year in terms of the dominant runs out of g2 number two on this list is probably the most controversial the most contentious especially because of the timing we're celebrating their most recent title in 2023 but they have yet to play at the world championship. But I'm putting this year's roster at number two on this list with the basis that I assume they're going to have a good performance at the world championship. Obviously, if they bottom out completely disappoint, then 2020 still deserves to be number two and you're dropping this year, excuse me, down a few pegs. But winning three out of four titles in this new look format over in the lec and not just winning okay they had to go through losers some of the years maybe they had some up and down regular seasons but in the games where it mattered most nine and one in finals across the year only a single loss in three best of fives that is just absolutely clutch out of the squad and it felt like at different times throughout the year, you were highlighting a different player. To close things out, Broken Blade was 16 steps ahead of any other top laner in the LEC. Han Sama's drawn three bands a game. Mickey's picking up MVP. Caps is looking like he's at vintage form. And this is the year where they move on from Yankos. And you're, everyone's concerned you're bringing in a rookie to replace the Western GOAT when it comes to junglers. And all Yike does is it took maybe a split for him to be the best juggler in the LEC. He wins Rookie of the Year and is already surpassed the most recent level that Yankos was playing. Even though Yankos was absolutely incredible on Team Heretics and we adore Yankos. One of our favorite players of all time, Yike steps in the biggest of shoes to fill in the jungle and fills them more than admirably so across the year even even in some of these games where g2 was losing or series it felt like the magic was back with this squad where you were just expecting them to win even when they would drop a game or drop a series and have to go through losers you'd still be talking about them uh, as favorites it didn't matter if they came in as a third or fourth seed you knew that when this team turned it on and were playing at the highest level that they could they could beat anybody in Europe and they proved that in three out of the four splits again I say it felt like the magic of G2 was there because not only did you have the confidence in them matching up against pretty much everyone in a best of series but it's because of the pick ban that they had Dylan Falco reunited with Caps and it just the diversity in draft, being able to flex so many different champions and having so many different pocket picks, whether you're talking a Lissandra support or the Kled that Broken Blade was constantly pulling out, Bell Vets for Yike in the jungle, and you know Caps, I mean, willing to play basically anything, whether it's meta or not. So I know they haven't played at Worlds. If they don't win a single game, then you're saying, wow, what a complete collapse. This is the third worst team that G2's ever put together. I'm not anticipating that. And let's be honest, if they have a deep run at Worlds, I mean, deep run for me, surprise deep run, maybe semifinals. That's, that would be a shocker with how big the gap looks from the East and West these days. But if they manage to do that, who knows? Maybe even they're knocking on that best G2 roster of all time, perhaps? But they haven't played Worlds yet. So that means they're not number one. That honor still goes to the golden year that almost was. Imagine if they won both splits, MSI and the World Championship. 2019 G2 absolutely was the golden year of not just G2, but of the LEC and European League of Legends as a whole. They set a record for fastest finals in the LEC, follow that up by the fastest international finals of all time, absolutely speed running everybody around the globe. Caps truly looked like a top three mid laner on the planet. Perks, it took him basically the spring split 
uh, to figure out how to play 80 carry, and then he became one of the very best in Europe, which is absolutely insane. That turnaround time, Wonders playing Pike top. This is, we have never seen a roster with more uh, pick and ban flair and diversity. This is the peak meta where you could play so many things mid, top, or bot, really. Perks is playing things like Yasuo and Syndra in the bot lane. There were so many flex options and no team in the world played it at a higher level than G2 did this year. And I mean, for four straight years, basically, Caps, or four straight splits, excuse me, Caps and Yankos were just exchanging MVPs in the LEC when everyone was doing their top 20 rankings for Worlds in 2019. Caps, Yankos, so many G2 members were hanging out in the top 10. It's unheard of to be talking about a Western player in that level uh, of confidence and excitement going towards an international stage. I don't know if we'll ever see a Western team reach the level that we did G2 2019 because it wasn't it wasn't even talking about East versus West at that point. G2 was just in the conversation. They beat SKT in two international best of fives in the same year. That, for an all-time record, for all Western teams, that would be impressive enough. But in a single year, G2 able to do that, absolutely incredible. Uh, this is obviously what brought Caps to that absolute level of stardom, able to do this. You know, picking up pentakills against SKT, showing up against some of the best mid laners in the world. Not only was this the best European team of all time, you can get rid of the G2 uh, roster here. Obviously, this was the best EU squad of all time, but they were also one of the most exciting teams to watch, not just in Europe, but around the entire globe. There's not many teams you can do a ranking like this where all the teams are... All the rosters have their own storyline and they're compelling in their own right. And G2 truly been a treat to watch ever since they stepped onto the scene in 2016. And there's no reason to think it's going to be slowing down. We're going to be seeing Grandpa Claps playing when he's 45 years old, still having fun as a Nico Ward when there's 645 champions in League of Legends. But G2, absolutely a treat to watch in EU. But that is all the time today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. You people stay beautiful as always. Thank you so much for watching and we will catch you on that flippity flip.